evening, brothers and sisters, I have a great news for you. After today, after this evening, you all will be very famous. Why? Because everybody is watching you right now. Before Mass start, uh, our pastor, Father Jeff, told me that we had a technical issue this morning, so the morning Mass was not being broadcast. But, so this Mass is going to be broadcast online. So you are all going to be famous after tonight. So you better watch out. If you're going to fall asleep, okay, it's going to be recorded. Your family and friends will know that you fall asleep in, in Mass. So make sure you stay awake. Make sure you keep that beautiful smile in, in, on your face, right? Now we feel tense. I feel tense. <laughs> we feel tense because we know somebody's watching us. Everything that we say, everything that we do, uh, that is being viewed by other people and being recorded, right? Do you feel tense at all? It's more of me. You know? I think they're focusing on me. But they can control it. They can focus on you too. So just, just, just be aware. Be aware that they're going to watch you too, right? So, and reflect, reflecting on this is it's, it's reminding me of a spiritual, a spiritual reality that we, will, we are always being broadcast live to the kingdom of heaven, right? Not to the North Pole, not to Santa Claus, okay? Yes, yeah, Santa Claus might know when you're being bad or being good, when you're being naughty, when you're awake or asleep. But that's just on fairy tales. Jesus, God, will be, will be the one that foresees everything. He's always watching. He knows when we are asleep. He knows when we are being bad, right? And that's why when John the Baptist was preaching about the, the baptism of repentance, all the people know that God knows everything that they have been doing. And so from the town of Judea, Jerusalem, and the city, the region around the Jordan River, they all came to John the Baptist to receive the baptism of repentance. They came to confess their sin because their sins are being known to God. Their sins are always being broadcast to God, right? And so, my dear brothers and sisters, today, Word of God saying, oh, well, John the Baptist is calling us to repentance because the Lord will come, like it or not. He will not come like a very gentle baby, like 2,000 years ago, very adorable, uh, that we can hold and, you know, that we can kiss, you know. The Lord is going to come in glory, and in His majesty the Lord will come. And today's gospel, uh, John the Baptist says very clearly that that uh, I am, uh, okay. He said that, that he will, okay, he, okay. His winering fan is at his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Okay, meaning that, meaning that, we can die at any moment. The Lord can call us at any moment. It's already, the axe already lies at the root of the tree. If we don't bear fruit, if we fall asleep, you know what happened, right? God might just say, your time is up, <laughs> right? So, my dear brothers and sisters, we always have to be prepared. Our lives will always be live stream in front of God. God knows everything. And when God knows everything, then there's no point of hiding our sins. The people, in, when they heard the word of, uh, of calling repentance from John the Baptist, they went to John the Baptist to receive the baptism of repentance, and then they were confessing their sin in public, right? And so Advent is a season when we are waiting for the Lord to come. The best way to prepare for the Lord to come is to clean ourselves, clean our soul, by going to, the, to confessions. Right? going to confess and tell the Lord all the things that we have done wrong. And when we confess our sins, the Lord, He's not only forgiving us, He's also giving us His grace so that we can overcome our struggle and of our, and our, our, our sins. Right? So the Lord is doing everything that He could so that we can be right in front of God. Right? Jesus is the one that have been said by the prophet Isaiah in the first reading today, 
On that day, a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his root a bud shall blossom. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and strength. The Lord, he, he's with that, that gift of wisdom and understanding to see and to know everything about us. And he will be the one that is going to judge us. Right? But if we trust in the Lord, if we run to him, he will be the one that is going to free us from the bondage of sins. Right? All we need to do is to repent. But how do we repent? Do we just come and say, you know, Heavenly Father, I am your son, I am your daughter, I went to uh, the Cathedral of the Sacred Heart, the glorious church, and I was being broadcast life online by force, and I smile, right? Would that be okay? Would that be enough? No, no. What did, Saint, uh, what did John the Baptist say? He said to the Pharisees and the Sadducees that you brood of viper who warned you to flee from the coming wrath, produce good fruits as evidence of your repentance. To know if we are truly repentant or not, depending on how we live our lives, if we bear any fruit at all, if we bear good fruits, my dear brother and sister, that is the evidence of our repentance. If we think that we are re repent, but we bear no fruit, then we are not guaranteed that we already uh, repent. So let us listen to the word of John the Baptist, especially this Advent season when we are called to, uh, to our family because this season is the season of family. Maybe we are already planning to buy gifts for somebody, right? For our parents, for our wife, for our husbands, for your priests. Just kidding, <laughs> right? right? Maybe right now we are starting to talk to the people that we have not been talking in a while to see what they want, to see what they need in this season so that we can give them gifts. So Advent and, and by bearing fruit is like that, my dear brothers and sisters, that we, that we repent, we bring our word and our actions and make it to bear fruit. And I would like to share with you uh, one story to end my homily uh, this evening. There's this lady, she's very, a very devout person, and he, she's considered to be very, very, very spiritual, that she prayed to God and she talked to God. And the, on one day, on occasion, she received an inspiration from God that Jesus telling her that he would like to dine at her home the next day, right? And so she was so excited because Jesus is going to enter my home and, and uh, you know, I will prepare everything for him. It's, he's going to be very, very special. So the very next day, she went to the store and buy new clothes because she's expecting somebody very special. She went to buy grocery stores and give, uh, and going to cook a very special dish. Uh, it's called menudo. You know what that is. It's from a very famous dish from the Hispanic culture. Okay, um, so she went out to get all the ingredients. She watched YouTube to make sure she cooked it very well. This authentic Mexican um, soup. And so at 6 p.m., she was you know, anxious, waiting for that knock on that door. Like, Jesus is going to knock on that door. And then yeah, as, exactly at 6, she heard knocking on the door. She rushed out to the door, and she opened the door. And, but then she did not see Jesus. She saw her parents. Her parents came to visit her because she had not visiting them in a while. So this season of the holiday of Christmas, they actually decided to go and to see their daughter. Right? So she was very disappointed and tell her parents, you know, mom and daddy, please not now. You know, just please go home. I'm waiting for somebody who is very important. Right? I will go visit you myself later after this, but not now. So they left very sad. And then she went inside the house waiting for that VIP person to come. And at 7 o'clock, she heard another knocking on the door. She rushed out. It has to be Jesus now. Right? And so she went and opened the door. And there's two per persons, two people in front of her door. 
it was a couple and they are her neighbor and they they ask her hey what are you cooking you know it smells so good you know our family we don't have a job and we don't have anything to celebrate this uh, this this christmas with our kids do you have any extra food to share with us and she also said like not not today today is a very special day i'm waiting for somebody who is very important right please go you know i'll give you some food other times so they they, they left the, the, her home hungry and then at 8 p.m at 8 p.m. she's just being very mad now right don't mess around with hungry woman because <laughs> she's gonna go wild right maybe you have that experience right so at 8 o'clock she's being very mad at God like Lord why did you promise that you're gonna come to dine with me but you did not show up when she screamed out of her lung and her heart to God she heard a voice in her conscience say, Well, daughter, I came to visit you twice, but you refused to bring me into your home. Right at that moment, her eyes were being broke, uh, open, and her heart was being opened wide, uh, wide. And now she's being able to understand that Jesus is in her parent. Jesus is in, in her neighbor. But she was blind. She was waiting, expecting somebody who is who, who is just like we have seen in the picture of Jesus Christ with long hair and with, and with the beard. Right? Jesus does not come in that form. Jesus and God can come in any form. But what we need to do is that we have to be awake. We have to be aware. And if we are awake and aware, then we will be able to see the presence of God when He comes to visit us, when He comes to knock into our door. So my dear brothers and sisters, with that note uh, of repentance and receiving our brother and sister into our home, that is exactly what St. Paul is saying. Welcome one another then, as Christ welcomed you for the glory of God. For I say that Christ became a minister of the circumcised to show God's truthfulness, to confirm the promises to the patriots, but so that the Gentiles might glorify God in his mercy when we receive our brothers and sisters when we bring the presence of god in our heart to show it to our brothers and sisters then they too will receive christ themselves and they are going to glorify god so let us make our thanks our, our christmas a very meaningful one to ourselves and to our brothers and sisters by repenting by forgiving those who have done wrong to us, by those that we have been neglecting. Let us bring God to them, so that they too will glorify God with us. Amen. Mm -hmm.